All right, you guys, today we're gonna check out the latest and greatest updates for Illustrator 2025. So let's take a look. And I'm gonna start with the most obvious one, which you probably saw before, and this is the new Object on Path tool. So for this, all you need to do is select your vector objects that you created. And I'm gonna go and select the new tool, click on it. And let's go to the stroke line and check this out. If I go on the stroke line with the mouse, it is going to change the icon. So when it changes the icon, I can click on it. And now you can see all the symbols got on the path of the stroke line. Here you also got a couple of settings. If you go down, you got the circle. If you rotate it, you can see you're gonna rotate all the icons all at once. If you go up, you got another circle. If you pull it to the right or pull it to the left, you're gonna reduce the spacing in between the icons. Now it is going to create also these little dots on the stroke line. So what happens if I drag one of these, it is going to swap the icons in between them. They also did a really good update on the artboards. So let's say if you wanna scale this up, I'm gonna press Shift plus O. And this way you can resize the artboard and here we got the width and the height or you can press and hold shift plus alt and scale it and you can see it is going to scale up the artboard but it won't scale the artwork in the artboard so check this out there's a new button going on here and it's called the scale artwork with artboard click on it and i'm gonna scale it up again and check this out. It's scaled up with the artwork simultaneously. Drag and dropping colors from swatches into gradients is some insane updates that they did. I'm gonna go and select a couple of colors. I'm gonna press and hold control. And this way I can go and select multiple swatches. I'm gonna go with four and I'm gonna go and drag and drop into the gradients and check this out. It is going to bring in four colors simultaneously and arrange these gradient sliders equally. The image trace got updated. So for example, I'm gonna select this image and I'm gonna go here to the properties, scroll down and here we got the image trace and I'm gonna select the high fidelity photo and it's going to try to trace it as best as possible. But here you can see we've got a lot of errors going on and they basically updated the gradient. And here you can see that the gradients are just some lines, but now you can customize that. So let's go to the image trace settings. And here we got a new settings with the gradients. Let's check this box. And we got this handle. I'm gonna go and increase it and check this out. It smoothened all those lines here into one single gradient. Now, not everywhere, but at some areas it did it successfully. So I'm gonna go and click on expand. I'm gonna right click on group and I'm gonna select this circle, for example, and I can go to the gradient and check this out. It included all the gradient colors and you can select the gradient tool and this way you can rearrange the gradient however you like. I did also another experiment because this illustration is really complex. So I decided to modify the original vector art and remove a couple of elements. And as you can see on the right side, now there are less shading and less colors going on. So I'm gonna go and repeat the process, go to image trace, high fidelity, activate the gradients, increase the slider. In this example, it managed to smooth out all the gradients with a 100% success rate. I'm gonna go click on expand, press the letter G and there it is. Also, this new mock-up feature got updated, so I got an illustration right here that I'm gonna position on this image. I'm gonna select both of these, and we're gonna go to the object. Let's go down to the mock-up and select Create Mock-up. Wait till it's gonna load up. And the program automatically recognized the shape of this can that is cylindric. And as you can see, the vector image is adapting perfectly around the cans. Now, you also can place multiple vectors and objects on the mock ups. So, I'm gonna select all these vectors and I'm also gonna select the image with the mock up. And let's do the same thing object. Let's go to mock up and click on create mock up. And we already got it one by one. Check this out. So I'm gonna double click, select. The main point is to double click until you're gonna find this menu here. So this way you can move around one by one and position them. By the way, there's another really interesting thing that I saw here. For example, I'm gonna select this heart and check this out, you can replace the heart with these new icons and it's going to switch it up with the icons that you like and it's pretty handy. They also updated the generative text to vector future. For example, I'm gonna select this heart shape and you can go up here and click on the generative shape fill. I want to fill up this heart shape with tulips. So I can type in decorate it with tulips. And here you can adjust the shape strength and details. I'm going to go with 50% as it is. And let's go to the effects. I'm going to go with minimalism, color and tone. You also got the color presets. I'm going to go with vibrant color. And check this out here, you can set the number of the colors that you want. So I'm gonna go with six. And then you also can specify the colors, which is great. I'm gonna click on plus, and then you go on until you're gonna fill it. So I'm gonna go with these six colors and click on generate. 
And the first example for some reason is always bad, but check this out, we got like two more alternatives and these came out actually pretty good. So you can select one of these and generate some more in that specific direction. I might say that it's not working that well, but I managed to generate a couple of really good examples if you put the time and effort in it. I also made a couple of videos on this, how you can create some really amazing vector shapes out of these by brainstorming and generating some really good ideas. I'm going to leave these links in the description. The contextual taskbar also got updated. You can go to windows and select contextual taskbar. And by the way, it's working really good with live shapes. Here we got the classic generative shape fill. You also can click on edit path and this way you can customize the paths however you like. And you get a couple of options here going on, but I don't want to get into these because you already know them. What I want to show you is the live shape button here. I'm going to click on it and it's going to pop up some new options. So with this handle, you're going to increase or decrease the spikes and then check this out. You also got the corners. So if I increase this one, it is going to make it rounded. And then the corner number two is on the same number, but you can unlink them and then you can modify the corner number two separately. And then you can go to the corner number one and then customize that as well. And check this out. You also can customize the corners right now. It's rounded. You can make it straight or you can make it negative rounded and you can do the same thing with the corner number two. And not but least, you got the Project Neo. Now you might ask, why do you need this? Because this is a 3D software. But what if I tell you that if you export these 3D shapes, you can import these in vectors in Illustrator. So let's take a look how to do this. You can go to the download button here and here you can select SVJ. You also can set up the width and the height of the image and click on download. Now I just imported in Illustrator and let's see what happens and check this out. It is fully vectorized. And it is doing a pretty good job as a beta. Of course, it is tracing some of these shadings. It's not perfect, but but if you think about this is like 90% clean already. All you need to do is just clean up some of these shapes and then you're ready. You pretty much saved up 90% of your time sketching these, vectorizing these. That basically takes you hours and days. And now all you need to do is just correct some of these vector parts. And pretty much these are the updates mainly in Illustrator 2025. Thanks for watching.